We are on the last section of Module 5. We're in Module 5D, and today we're going to learn yet to solve another type of equation. But it's going to sound kind of familiar. Today's equation is an equation that contains a rational exponent. Hmm, let's think about that. Do we know what the word rational means? Sure we do. We've heard it over and over again. Rational has the word ratio in it. Ratio means fraction. But now the fraction is going to be in the exponent spot. So before we can actually solve an equation that has rational exponents, we got to go back and review how to work an expression that has an exponent that's rational, that is a fraction. So let's go to our notes. Okay, if you look here at the first page, we have a definition. Anytime you have an exponent that's a fraction, it's going to get changed into a root. What happened in, in higher math, mathematicians decided they didn't want to see all those square root and cube root symbols. So they decided that another way to write a root is to write it as an exponent that's a fraction. And when you have an exponent that's a fraction, the denominator of the fraction tells you what root you're doing, and the numerator of the fraction tells you what exponent or power you're doing. So let's go to the board and work some examples just reviewing how to work an exponent that's a fraction. All right, guys. I have four expressions here. They all have exponents that are fractions. So we got to go back to basics. We understand basic stuff. If I say 4 to the first, that means 4 one time, which is 4. If I say 4 squared, that means 4 twice, which is 4 times 4, which is 16. But now we have exponents that are fractions. This does not mean half of 64. If I wanted you guys to do half of 64, I would have written a half and a 64 side by side connected by multiplication. This is read 64 to the half power. And what you got to get in your brain is every time you see an exponent that's a fraction, you're going to immediately change this to a root. So you're going to write a root symbol. The denominator is the root, so that's a square root. We're going to leave the 64. The numerator is the exponent. So we're doing the square root of 64 to the first power. Now you're going to say, well, what do I do first? Do I do the root first or the exponent? It doesn't matter. What's 64 to the first power? That's 64. And if you square root 64, what do you get? You get 8. If I work it with the root first, what's the square root of 64? 8 and 8 to the first power is 8. So now you've got a decision to make. Do you want to do the root part first or the exponent part first? Remember, exponents make the numbers bigger. Roots make the numbers smaller. So doesn't it make sense to do the root first and get a smaller number? Okay. If I have 27 to the 1 third, we're going to rewrite this as a root. What root is this? Well, the denominator is a 3, so this is a cube root of 27, and the exponent is still a 1. What's the cube root of 27? What number do you multiply 3 times to get 27? You get a 3, and 3 to the first power is 3. See how easy that is? Now I have 4 to the 3 halves. So again, what root is this? The denominator is a 2. It's a square root. I have a 4. But the exponent is now going to be a 3. It is always easier to do the root first. What is the square root of 4? Well, the square root of 4 is 2. But now you've got to cube it. And 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Let's do one more. I have 8 to the 2 thirds. So I have an exponent that's a fraction, which means I must write this as a root. What root is this? The denominator is a 3, so this is a cube root. I put my 8. My exponent is the numerator. That's a 2. So I'm going to do the cube root of 8. What number do you multiply 3 times to give you 8? That would be 2. And then I'm going to do my exponent. 2 squared is 4. So we're going to now solve equations, and you're going to see exponents that are not 1s or 2s or 3s or 4. You're going to see exponents that are fractions. And just think in your head, 
we're going to be dealing with roots. Okay, so let's go to our first equation that has a rational exponent. It's x to the 3 halves minus 8 equals 0. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's equal to 0. I'm going to factor it. Have you ever factored a letter x that has an exponent that's a fraction? No, you haven't. You could factor x squared, that's x times x. You could factor x to the fourth, x squared times x squared. But you can't factor this. So we're going to have a different procedure. To solve an equation with rational exponents, we're going to solve using the same procedure as we did the square root method. Remember when we did the square root method? We isolate the square, and then we square root both sides. It's the same procedure. Procedure one, step one in this, is to isolate the exponent. Whoever owns that rational exponent has to be isolated. So we want to isolate this term. So we're going to add 8. So we're going to get x to the 3 halves equals 8. Now all we got to do is get rid of this exponent. Well, guys, think about what your goal is. Your goal is to get x equals. When you get an x, what's understood to be the exponent here? Very good. It's a 1. So the question I have for you is, how do we change 3 halves, a fraction, into the number 1? Well, couldn't we take 3 halves and multiply it by its reciprocal, 2 thirds? Isn't 3 halves times 2 thirds 6 over 6, which is 1? And that's what we're going to do. To get rid of a rational exponent, after you get it isolated, you take that exponent and raise it to its reciprocal. Does anybody remember the correct word for reciprocal in math? It's multiplicative inverse. And if you put the two-thirds exponent on the left, you're going to balance and put the two-thirds exponent on the right. Everybody look closely. I put it in the exponent spot. Don't put it down here and look like it's multiplication. It's not. Because these are two exponents side by side from algebra, you learned Two exponents side by side with a parenthesis between them is connected by multiplication. Well, when you multiply three halves and two thirds, that cancels and it makes x to the first. These are exponents. That was called in 99 the power rule. The power rule says two exponents connected by multiplication. By a parenthesis, you multiply. This is the problem is the right side. You have eight to the two thirds. You can't leave that. Now, because you have an exponent that is a fraction, you need to rewrite this as a root. You can't leave that as the answer. So this is x equals, this is the cube root, because that's the denominator, of 8 squared. And then you've got to work it out. What is the cube root of 8? 2. And what is 2 squared? 4. Cube roots only have one answer, and that's your solution. And just like every other equation, you could check it. The check is worked in your notes, and you could see it balances. Let's try another one. x minus 4 to the 2 thirds equals 16. Well, guys, I'm looking at this equation. I'm seeing that ugly exponent. This is an equation with a rational exponent. So let me ask you a question. Can we move the 4 with the 16? No, we cannot. It's stuck in parentheses. Well, have you ever gotten rid of a parenthesis by doing an exponent two-thirds? No, you have not. Now you're going to say, well, do I change this into a root? Uh-uh. The only time you change the exponent that's a fraction into a root is when it's connected to a number, like over here. It's connected to number 8, because then we could work it out and get a number. Because this exponent is connected to a letter x, we're going to leave it as an exponent. The rule here, the process is, to solve an equation with a rational exponent, step one is to isolate the exponent. Make sure on the left side are only the terms connected to the exponent. Well, we have that here. x minus 4 is all connected to the exponent because it's in parentheses. So step one is done. Step two is to get rid of this exponent, you need its multiplicative inverse or its reciprocal. What is the reciprocal of 2 thirds? 3 halves. And if you put that exponent on the left, you put that exponent on the right. Because these are two exponents side by side and they're connected by multiplication because there's a parenthesis between them, 2 thirds and 3 halves make 6 over 6, which is 1. So they cancel. And that leaves you x minus 4. 
the right side you have 16 and that exponent 3 halves. Now you're not done. What's our, been our whole goal in this chapter? This whole goal in every module is to solve for x. So on the left side, do we need the parentheses? No, there's an invisible 1 here. So we can drop the parentheses and just write x minus 4. On the right side, though, we have a number with a rational exponent. That's got to be rewritten as a root. What root is that? We got 2, so this is the square root. If you want to put the 2 as the index, you can, but it's understood it's there. 16, and your exponent's still 3. Now, this is the part you're not going to like. Do you remember when we were solving equations with squares? Let's take a walk back to module 4. If I gave you x squared equal 9, you got rid of the square by square rooting, right? But we talked about this. Squares have two solutions. So remember when you did the square root, you put both the plus and minus to have the two answers? Because we talked about it, when you physically put a square root symbol in an equation, you have to have two solutions. Well, sweeties, you did that right here. You physically put a, plus, a square root symbol in the equation. So you must remember to put a plus or minus. We didn't put the plus or minus in the first equation because that was not a square root. That was a cube root. Cube roots only have one answer. Square roots always have two. So this is where you're going to mess it up, is right here. When you physically change this rational exponent into a root, if it changes to a square root, you must put the plus or minus. Now we're going to work that out. So we have x minus 4 equals plus or minus. What is the square root of 16? 4. And you have a cube. So x minus 4 equals plus or minus. What's 4 cubed? 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Really, there's not one equation here. There's two. x minus 4 can equal positive 64. x minus 4 can equal negative 64. And then you solve each. They're each linear now. So we get x equals 68. We add 4. And we get x equals negative 64 plus 4 is negative 60. We get two solutions. So the hardest thing to remember with working a rational exponent equation is if you change that exponent to a square root. Well, if you change it to a square root, it must get two solutions. You must put the plus or minus. If you change it to a cube root, it keeps only one solution. All right. Well, I think we have one more example in our notes to look at because I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, oh, this is pretty. Everything works out to be nice integers. So let's look at our last rational exponent equation. We have 6x to the 5 halves exponent minus 12 equals 0. All right, so we know it's an equation that contains a rational exponent, a fraction. Step one is isolate it. I know that's hard to remember, but you've got to remember it. It's just like doing the square root method. You isolate the square, then you square root to get rid of it. It's just like doing a radical equation. You isolate the square root symbol, and then you get rid of it. So you're going to isolate that exponent. So whoever can move to the right side moves. So yes, you're right. We can add 12. So we get 6x to the 5 halves equals 12. That's not the only term can move. This is connected by multiplication, so you must move the 6 by dividing. The 6 has nothing to do with that exponent. So now you have x to the 5 halves equals 12 divided by 6 is 2. Now that you have that exponent isolated, to make a 5 halves become a 1, we're going to do the reciprocal or the multiplicative inverse. The reciprocal is 2 fifths, 2 fifths. We're always balancing. What we do on the left, we do on the right. Because these are two exponents side by side, connected with a parentheses, it's the power rule. They're connected by multiplication. This would be 10 over 10, which is x to the first. So that's going to cancel. Over here, this is 2 to the 2 fifths. Now, because this is a number, the base is a number, we've got to rewrite this. This means x is, what root is this? The fifth root of 2 squared. 
Now, can we work that out? Well, the fifth root means five times. Is there a number you can multiply five times to make two? No, there's not. There's not a whole number you could do that. So we can't do the root part, but can we do the exponent part? Sure we can. So this would be the fifth root, two squared is four. That would be one way to write the solution. If you remember what we talked about in basic algebra, this would be an answer that they would say is in radical form. Radical is a word for root. That's in root form. But you know the way mathematicians are. Sometimes they don't like the answers written in one form. They want you to change it. Just like think about elementary school. It was great when you were in kindergarten, first and second grade. You learned to print your name. Then they come to third grade and they say, oh, you know what? We're going to learn cursive, how to write your name in script. The same thing here in math. This is one way to write that answer. But there is another way. If it's written as a root, it could be written with an exponent. That's a fraction. So if we were going to rewrite this with a rational exponent, the base is 4. We want a fraction. The root is the denominator. The exponent on here, which is an invisible 1, is the numerator. This would be the right answer in what we call rational exponent form. So you're going to have to read your directions on your homework. Do they want the answer in radical form or rational exponent form? Now, let's check this. And you're going to say, oh, we can't check this. Sure we can. Remember to check. You always write the original. Which form would be easier for you guys to check? the radical form or the rational exponent? Well, let's think. That value's got to replace x. x has got an exponent on it that's a fraction. So doesn't it make sense to replace x with this form, the rational exponent? So we're going to do that. We're going to leave 6. We're going to replace x with 4 to the 1 fifth. I'm going to put it in parentheses because those are connected by multiplication. I'm still going to leave the 5 halves. Minus 12 equals 0. You can't do multiplication first because you've got to work exponents first. These two exponents are side by side. They have a parentheses between them. They're connected by multiplication. Well, this 5 and this 5 would cancel. So you have a 6, you have the 4, but now it's 1 over 2. That exponent's 1 half. What does 1 half mean? 1 half means we're really doing the square root of 4. Remember, the denominator is the root, square root. The numerator is the exponent, 1. What is the square root of 4, guys? It's 2. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. So that's the reason why mathematicians went with changing everything that's written as a root using an exponent that's a fraction, because those exponents that are fractions are easier to check. So we have now completed module five. We had four different types of equations, polynomial, radical, rational, and rational exponents. And what I wanted you to observe is as we solved all four of these new equations, we used skills from algebra we already learned, and we went back to making these equations linear or quadratic. Okay, module six is coming up. Something new. See you then. Thank you.